Hello, this is Pastor Jim Ponko with the Midweek Meditation for November 17th, 2021. Have you ever witnessed a coronation of a king or a queen? They're very rare. Uh, the last one in Britain was in 1953. There was one in Spain in 2014. But I didn't really see any video of either of them. I, I imagine it was an, a spectacular event to see a king or a queen ascend to the throne of his or her country and, and, and to accept that jewel-encrusted crown and, and maybe a scepter as a sign of power and honor. That's got to be a glorious and unforgettable experience. Even if you've never seen a coronation, I can assure you that the day will come when you will be witness to the greatest coronation the world has ever seen. Because all of us, with all the nations, will witness the coronation of the King of Kings, the Lord of the universe. We will see Jesus ascending to the throne of glory to judge and rule over all in triumph and majesty. That's what the prophet Daniel teaches us. He gives us a glimpse of the glory that will come on the day that Jesus returns. Listen to his description in, Deut in uh, Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Daniel writes, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations, peoples, uh, and, men, and men of every language and worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. The book of Daniel is a fascinating Old Testament book because it's filled not only with history, but also with prophecy. Some of Daniel's prophets are, prophecies are, are, are amazing. They're very clear, very specific prophecies about the rise and fall of, the, of many of the great nations that would come on the scene in world history between the time of Daniel and the time of Jesus. But here Daniel is describing a very different scene. He's not describing another nation rising to power. He says this, he says, I looked and there before me was one like a son of man. What does he mean by one like a son of man? Well, the answer is actually pretty easy to find. You see, Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man. In fact, it was the favorite name that he had given to himself. Dozens of time in, times in the New Testament, he called himself the Son of Man. But the question is, why would Jesus use that name for himself? And the writer of the letter to the Hebrews gives us a real good answer. He explains, since the children have flesh and blood, he too, that is Jesus, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. Jesus called himself the Son of Man because he came as our brother, a part of the human race. And he had seen mankind completely under the control of their own sinful desires, the temptations and deceit of Satan, and as a result, completely helpless in the face of death. Let's face it, Jesus saw me and you. He saw how we struggle to do the right thing, and, and then we fall back into the same sinfulness again and again, the same arguments, the same resentment, the same addictions, the same laziness and fear, the things that we promised that we were going to overcome, that we were going to stop doing, and yet we did them again and again. And yet, when Jesus saw us that way, he loved us anyway. And so he came as a son of man, as one of us, 
and he took the blows of his heavenly Father's anger in our place, and he took the punishment of death that we should have deserved. He did it all for us. But now Daniel says, the day is coming when Jesus is going to come again, this time to be crowned the king of the universe. But notice that Daniel says he's still like a son of man. He's not some inapproachable aristocrat who doesn't know us and, and who isn't one of us. Jesus is like us. And that's good for us to know. Because there are times when we're facing difficulty in our life and we're wondering, how should I pray about this? I feel so uncomfortable. I don't know how to put things. I don't know what to say. And at those times, Jesus would want us to remember who we're talking to when we pray. The writer to the Hebrews also explains, he says, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Think about that. He understands what it's like to be a human. He knows what it's like to feel sorrow because he cried at the grave of his friend. He knows what it's like to experience joy because he was the one who kept a wedding celebration going by stocking it with wine. We can talk to Jesus as somebody who understands what it's like to be human. But the thing is, we always have to remember that Jesus is like us, and yet he's also very different from us. As Daniel points out, Jesus is the king of the universe, or, or as Daniel puts it, he was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. In other words, Jesus can do whatever he wants, and there's no one who has the power to tell him otherwise. Jesus is no figurehead. He's equal with the Father in power and glory. He is God. And for us, that means something very important. First of all, it means that he deserves our honor and respect. It means that we shouldn't be using the name of Jesus Christ like an exclamation point at the end of a sentence to show that we're really angry. It means that when we worship him, we shouldn't be using nothing but half-hearted, going through the motions kind of worship because Jesus is God and our Savior and our King. But the second thing that the fact that Jesus is the Son of God um, means for us is that he is ruling in power and glory over all. And that's a real advantage for us because we are members of Jesus' family. We have a friend in high places. If, for example, you were having trouble uh, with a, a, a billing mistake on, on your credit card, right? And you'd called and you'd called and tried to get it fixed and you, weren't, and you weren't able to get anywhere. But you had a friend. A friend who was the manager of the billing department at that credit card. Right. What would you do? You'd call him, wouldn't you? It would be silly not to. It'd be silly to try, keep on trying to fix the problem on your own because you weren't going to get anywhere. Why not go to the person in the high place, the person who has the authority and the power to fix things quickly. But you know what? We do that kind of thing to Jesus all the time. What I mean is that even though we have this friend in high places, we don't go to him for help. Instead, we try to fix things on our own. And as a result, we are often filled with fear and stress and worry over of something over which we never had any control in the first place. Why not just give our friend in high places a call and tell him about the problem and stop worrying? We know he'll do anything for us. I mean, after all, he, he did give his life for us on the cross. And we also have his promise. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will deliver you. So don't fail to take Jesus up on his offer. You have a friend in high places, the highest of places. And let us worship the king, Christ the king. Once he came like a son of man, he came to win us a victory over sin and death and Satan's power. 
and someday he'll come again. Also like a son of man, but with the power and glory of God. And on that day, every knee will bend in worship of him, either willingly or unwillingly. But in the meantime, let's keep bending our knees in worship of him and praise of his name and in humble service to others. You see, every time we bow low to serve the Lord and to serve one another, we see more clearly. We see more clearly the coming of the one who is like a son of man, one who comes on the clouds of heaven. Amen. Let's pray. Christ our King, you have supremacy over all. You will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. You have destroyed death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Reign in our hearts that we may serve you more faithfully and speak more boldly to others of your saving love. Praise be to the Lord God who alone does marvelous things. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us to pray, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.